Good evening. Thank you for attending Camden's first drive-in special town meeting. I'll read the warrant greeting and return, and then we'll conduct the election of the moderator. To Randy Gagney, Constable of the Town of Camden, Maine. Greetings. In the name of the state of Maine, you are hereby required to notify and warn the inhabitants of the town of Camden required by law to vote in town affairs to meet at the Camden Snow Bowl located at 20 Barnstown Road in the town on Monday, January 25th, 2021 at 6 p.m. Snow date will be Tuesday, January 26th, 2021, same time. In the evening to vote on articles one through five at which time the meeting will adjourn. Return. I certify that I have notified the voters of Camden of the town and place of the town of Camden special town meeting to be held Monday, January 25th, 2021 by posting an attested copy of the notice of warrants at the Camden Public Safety Building, Camden Town Office, Camden Public Library, and the Camden Post Office on January 14th, 2021 Signed, Randy Gagney, Constable. Article one of the warrant is to elect the moderator to preside over tonight's meeting. Do I have a nomination for moderator? Moderator. I nominate Dave Morrison. Do I have a second? I second. We have a nomination and a second for Dave Morrison. Are there any other nominations? I'll need at least three registered voters to cast their votes. I'll now read the votes. Dave Morrison, Dave Morrison, and Dave Morrison. Dave, could you, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Could everyone join me, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dave, if you would repeat after me, raise your right hand. I, state your name. I, Dave Morrison. Do you swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? Do you swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? And of this state. And of this state as long as I shall continue a citizen thereof. As long as I shall continue a citizen thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I state your name. I, Dave Morrison. Do swear. Do swear. That I will faithfully discharge to the best of my abilities. That I will faithfully discharge to the best of my abilities. The duties incumbent on me as moderator the duties incumbent upon me as moderator of this meeting according to the Constitution and laws of the state. Of this meeting according to the Constitution and laws of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you, Kendall. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, this is a first of its kind, and we're glad you're here with us. Uh, we are just waiting for a last few number of folks who are entering to be processed. So while we do, I would like to invite Town Manager Audra Kaler to say a few words to you. Apologies for that. I've been asked to say a few words about uh, this project and how we've arrived at this point and why we've asked you all to come here tonight. 
sorry about that. So I've been asked to say a few words tonight about this project and what's led us to this point. So it really began about three years ago in 2018 when Camden's uh, select board committed us to the global covenant of, covenant of mayors and committing to reducing our carbon footprint. And as part of that, we started looking at a number of town operations and ways to save energy. The first project that we looked at was purchasing all of our street lights from CMP and then upgrading them to LEDs. And once that project was well underway, we turned our attention to the town buildings and facilities. And over the years, we've had a few different issues with some of the heating systems and other elements of these buildings that have needed attention. And we decided we wanted to look at them comprehensively. So we reached out to some energy consultants about doing an audit of all of our buildings to better understand what the baseline was for energy consumption. And when we spoke with those consultants, we realized it was going to be pretty labor intensive process where we would be looking at everything very separately specking it out, bidding it out, and that wasn't really the approach that we wanted to go with. And it was after speaking with some um, ESCOs, which are uh, energy consultants that have a bit of a different approach, was it, which is performance contracting, where they bid out and spec out all the work and have to guarantee the energy savings that they've engineered for the facilities and hold all of the different contractors accountable and guarantee the price and um, ensure that there are no change orders that we decided that that was the approach that we wanted to take. And it represented a number of different projects across all of our facilities in town and it covered a range of issues from some of the problems that we were seeing with uh, leaks in the roof at the Opera House that made it difficult for us to insulate the roof to that building and then realize energy savings through that to um, things like replacing the heating system at the public safety building, which has failed. So we've, we've got a series of different improvements at the different facilities across town. And it's going to be a project that's valued at uh, 2.3 million over the 17-year um, financing period that we're proposing. It'll save a million dollars and it'll equate to 22% in uh, energy savings when these projects are all finished. Thank you, Audra. So I would like to begin by sharing with you some information about how tonight is going to run. So as you know, we are in unusual circumstances for this election, and we thank you for your patience and flexibility. I'm going to read you instructions and information about tonight's election. As you probably already know, the audio for this election can be found at 88.3 FM on your car radio. Plus, we're broadcasting it through speakers for anyone who needs that. We have runners with wireless microphones. If you would like to speak, would you please flash your lights, and I will recognize you and direct one of the runners to bring you a mic. Until that point, if you could turn your headlights off, that actually makes it easier for me to see once it comes time to hold up cards. So if you could do that, that would be a help. As we always do, I will be using the main moderator's manual in supervising this meeting. We have four articles to vote on this evening. If Article 2 passes, then we will vote on Articles 3 and 4. Then we'll vote on Article 5, which is an advisory, non-binding article, which means it's simply a tool for the select board to gauge your opinion on an issue. I will read each article and then ask for a motion and a second. 
at this point, I'll open the floor for any questions or discussion. Again, if you want to speak, if you could please flash your headlights, and I will recognize you as best I can, and ask a runner to bring you a microphone. Before you offer your question or comment, if you could please state your name and your address. This is the first time we have run an election in this manner, and I thank you in advance for your patience. There is not much to base it on, so we're creating it as we go. I will say, though, Camden has a long and proud history of having a very serious interest in town governance. We always have a high turnout at the polls, and tonight is, is really amazing. This is a first, and uh, it's, it's very impressive. So again, thank you so much. So finally, um, oh, I'm sorry. According to Maine law, I'm sorry, strike that. Um, when it's time to vote, if you will please open your window and hold up your voter card. That is how we will count. I'm going to try to count visually from here. We also have uh, election clerks who will help with folks in the back to make sure that every vote is counted. Um, so I will first, on each article, ask for those in favor. And then I will ask for those opposed. And we will count those. So again, thank you. And let's begin. Article 2, shall the town vote to authorize the town manager to execute a performance contracting agreement with the Siemens Industry, Inc., with certain performance guarantees described therein to upgrade multiple public buildings, increase energy efficiency, and reduce long-term energy demands and costs. Do I have a motion? We have a move. Do I have a second? We have a second. Is there any discussion? I'm looking to see if there's anyone who would like to either ask a question or make a comment. Could you flash your headlights, please? If you could flash your headlights, that'll help us get you a microphone. OK, someone is on their way. Please, when you begin, state your name and your address. Hi. Go ahead. Hi, this is Jeff Scott and 21 Ames Terrace. And my question is, uh, is this... Uh, we, we received, many of us received a flyer over the weekend, and it implied that this contract with Siemens was not competitive. Is that true? Who'd like to answer that? The a member of the select board is coming up to answer your question. Hello? Okay, this is Mark Ratner from the Select Board. It's actually not true that we decided after having many discussions over many years with a lot of contractors about work on the public safety building, on the library, on the Opera House, to go for a performance-based contract, which is a contract where the contractor guarantees the work um, and they also guarantee energy savings. And there are only two companies that do that kind of work in this region. We approached both of them to see if they would give us a bid, 
And one of them did not give us a bid. Siemens is the company that did. And we had a lot of conversations, a lot of discussion with them over many, over most of this year, past year, at the select board meetings, which were open to the public. So we did approach two companies. One decided not to do it. Those were our only choices for a performance-based contract. Thank you, Mark. Uh, this, is, this is Jeff Scott again. And I, Jeff, I will just say, typically we like to let everyone ask a question before we do multiple questions, but seeing as you have the mic, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, Dave, I was looking for a response, so this will be my, la my last question. Um, if we don't approve this contract with Siemens, uh, what are the financial, potential financial consequences of that? In other words, are we taking advantage of a special deal here, or what's the deal? Oh, Audra? Um, all right. Hello, this is Audra Kaler again. So this is Audra Kaler again. So when we initially started looking at what the uh, cost of this project would be in terms of financing, we had modeled it on a 2.5% interest rate. However, when we approached financial institutions to get an idea of what the interest rate would actually be, we were all surprised that we had received proposals that uh, one of them, the lowest being 2%. So when I informed the select board that we had such low interest rates, uh, they were interested in taking advantage of that sooner rather than waiting until June to see what happened. Um, I'm not in a position to speculate as to what's going to happen with interest rates. So 2% seemed very favorable in terms of financing, and that's one of the reasons that we wanted to jump on that quickly. Another thing in terms of the cost of the project was that we received, or not, Siemens received bids from a lot of contractors that will be doing this work. And uh, some of those bids were incredibly favorable as well. And the concern was that if we had to wait until June, that we might not be able to take advantage of some of those more favorable prices that they received and all of that work would have to be rebid. Did you want to speak? I'd like to speak as well. Uh, Bob Falciani of the Select Board is going to add to that response. Yes, everything that um, Bob Falciani, everything that Audrey said is absolutely correct. Um, there are a couple of other elements that we had to consider. One is um, uh, the the uh, construction cost escalation factors, which could be in the order of three hundred thousand dollars. The yeah, we can't predict interest rates. Honestly, nobody here can up or down. Oh, sorry. Uh, the uh, interest rates we can't predict, none of us can. I can state that we did check last week and the rates were at 2.2%. Thank you. Are there more questions or comments? Could you flash your headlights? Dave, I have one more comment. While we're getting a mic there, Mark Ratner of the Select Board wants to add a final comment to Bob's. Uh, one more comment I'd like to make about this, this public meeting. Uh, those of us on the select board are not in favor of doing special pub town meetings like this. And the only reason, and we didn't want to, and the only reason we did, there are two reasons. Number one, the cost efficiency of doing it now. And also there is an advantage to doing the contract now. The work will get done uh, or started this summer. If we waited too longer, we would lose work. And there are a couple of the buildings that are in dire need of, of support, especially the library. This will fix the HVAC system at the library. If it fails, and it has failed from time to time with some chewing gum and fixes, uh, but if it fails, we risk losing their catalog and the historical papers because of mold, because it is a building that is built underground. This is a very timely issue. That's one of the reasons we opted to do this. Go ahead with your question. Could you give us your name and your address, please? Uh, name Elliot Thompson, 88 East Fork Road. How does this contract affects, affect the property tax burden?
Audra Kaler is going to respond to your question. So the uh, Article 4 that you'll be asked to approve uh, is proposing to use a portion of the unassigned fund balance, 200000 to offset the first year of this payment. So the idea is that this first year it will not have a tax impact. When you look at the upcoming years, so the next 16 years worth of payments, in FY23, we have about $77,000 worth of debt service payments a year falling off. That's debt from one of the wastewater treatment plant upgrade projects that we've done in the past. So when you take that $77,000 a year and subtract it from the 100 average of 103,000 in debt service payments for this project, as well as the uh, $13,000 contribution from the library towards half of the cost of the upgrades to their facilities, we're looking at about $17,000 a year increase in debt service over the 16-year period. So that will be the tax impact, $17,000 a year over a 16-year period. If I could just ask everyone, if you could turn your headlights off, that makes it much easier for us to identify folks who want to speak. So if you could please turn off your headlights completely, that would really help us. Thank you so much. Is there another question or comment? Okay, there's one way in the back. We are going to get you a mic. Please bear with us. Hello, uh, Brian Robinson, uh, 20 Azalea Lane, right here in downtown Camden. Um, two questions, if I might, uh, following on Jeff Scott's lead. Thank you for breaking the ice. Um, first is, is there any commitment to using local contractors and hence stimulating the local economy with the $2.3 million of investment that we're being asked to consider? Um, Bob Falciani is going to respond to your question. <laughs> Excellent question, and the answer is yes. I did take a few minutes to, not everything has been bid yet by, uh, on these projects because we're moving rather rapidly. Okay, sorry people, I'll get close to the mic. The answer is yes. Um, Siemens has been and is bidding every piece of the project through multiple contractors. Excuse me. <laughs> and to date, there are at least 10 contractors, and I'll name a few of them, uh, some, many of whom are local, like Maritime Energy, Rockland, Farley, Rockport, LaJoy, Augusta, Midcoast Energy, Demerscata, Bennett Engineering, Freeport, Mac Electric, Belfast, <coughs> Coastal Copper, CCB, Westbrook, Maine, EMC, Westbrook, Maine. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. One further question that I have is, um, is there anything in this contract that will restrict our ability to make deeper carbon cuts, energy improvements in the future to any of these facilities? Bob Falciani again. Uh, the answer is the, the, this is a phase one contract that you're approving tonight. There have been ongoing uh, investigations to go beyond what, which would be in a phase two. Uh, that would have to be, well, frankly, uh, the numbers need to be crunched. The analysis has to be done and brought back to the town for another vote. Not the least of which is there are some elements of this facility we're standing on today that um, we couldn't, they couldn't do any analysis of because they wanted to wait until we were actually doing snowmaking, one of our biggest energy consumers, during the winter. So 
there's a definite, <laughs> this is a first major step, but the contract that you're approving cannot be extended or increased without town approval. Thank you. Is there another question or comment? Please flash your headlights. I see one in the center in the back. Hello, this is Elliot Thompson, 88 East Fork Road. I see in the documents on the town website uh, an item for heat system at the Snow Bowl, $544,000 geothermal. Uh, what is the justification for that technology and amount? The recommendation for geothermal is mainly because of its uh, ability to reduce our carbon footprint uh, and uh, to provide uh, a system where we can look to the future of this facility. It, it, we all have talked about and Audra mentioned climate change and the need to react. This facility um, if we, if we look at, anybody looks at any calculation of temperature increases over the next few years, you see you can calculate the window in which we cannot anymore make snow as is going on right now. <clears throat> and or, um, you know, we, well, storms changing, no snow, rain, etc. So this system is designed with the future in mind and that is to do something here on this site to make this a facility or develop a facility near term that can be used 12 months of the year i'd like to ask if you have already spoken could you please let other folks who haven't spoken speak and then you're welcome to speak again when everyone's had their chance to speak I'm told there is one uh, on the left. Hi, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Beitler, 78 Mountain Arrow Drive. I'd like to just clarify the cost. Um, if you do $17,000 a year for 16 years, you're woefully, woefully short. What we're really doing is we're retiring $77,000 in debt service for other things. So our cost for this project is much higher to reach the uh, two point. Uh, whatever. I am in favor of the project. I just think the town should uh, be clear about um, the effect on our um, taxes. It's just because we're retiring debt earlier that the incremental cost seems uh, lower. Thank you. Yes, that's correct. And I, I'll state that for everyone just so that everyone knows. It is a hun an average of $103,000 in debt service payments over, seven, uh, over the 17 year period. Thank you. Another question or comment? I see in the center and the rear, we, we will get you a microphone. Could you please flash your lights again, please? We're going to try and get a mic to you. Very good, thank you. Is it okay? Hello, hi Dave. This is Kate Bates at 71 Washington Street. With the recent administration change in Washington and with the environment being a, a top five issue for them, might there be matching dollars issued to states for these types of projects in the near future that we just haven't had time yet to process or understand where the Biden administration is going to go with that. Was that taken into consideration? Thank you. I have a real hard time ever relying on the state or federal government to help us on a local level with any of our infrastructure needs. So even though that might be the case, I don't think it's something that we can rely on as a municipality. 
I think we've put ourselves in that position with the state government as well, and we haven't really seen the partnership that we were intending from that level of government. So, I mean, that's something that we could wait for, but we might be waiting for quite a long time. Thank you. I see uh, on my left, about halfway back, we are headed your way. So this is, uh, excuse me, I'm going to turn so we don't get feedback here. So this is John Feeney, 10 Rockport Drive. Um, why, this is a two-part question, but they're very simple. Why are there not Camden contractors who are licensed and bonded not uh, considered in this situation? Or for that matter, are they not uh, bidding? Second question. There was a mention of uh, phase two. And so how is it that the $17,000 of debt service that we're talking about in taxes accurate with the phase two coming on board? Thank you for your question. We're going to. Uh, Mark Ratner, Camden Select Board. Um, question uh, about phase two. Phase two is something that we've been looking at, but it's not obligated. There's no contract for phase two. It's not part of this deal. That's something additional that we could do in the future. Um, we'll do that. As far as local contractors, uh, as I mentioned previously, uh, there are no local contractors that offer a performance-based contract. So we had to look for people that did because the energy savings are such an important part of this as we work with the Global Covenant of Mayors, which is basically small towns dealing with Paris Accords, which is one of the reasons we looking to save the energy. That was a very important part of this contract. However, local contractors can bid with Siemens to perform the work. Siemens is not going to bring in a whole bunch of people from out of town to perform this work. So. Um, as Bob mentioned, he listed a whole bunch of contractors that are, I guess, a part of the deal already are being considered. So, you know, local people can get involved. A lot of local people will get the work. It's just we needed the performance-based contract guarantees to, and they were the only ones that offered it. Thank you, Mark. Another question. Please flash your lights if you would like to speak. If you'd like to speak, please flash your headlights. I see one in the very back. A microphone is on its way. Thank you for your patience, everyone. And Beth Ward, thank you for your eagle eye. This is Bruce Peel of 13 C Street. And I've only done a brief reading of the numbers, but it looks like we're going to spend over the course of the loan, $2.3 million for slightly over a million dollar savings. Are there other benefits to this? Um, oh, you know, what else? It doesn't look like a good investment to me unless there's other benefits. Thank you for your question. Yeah, Bob folks, you're on here again. Um, the other benefits are beyond the guaranteed savings, the $2.3 million uh, with the guaranteed savings that are, that are proposed in the contract, that's a net payment to the town, of, out of the town net of its savings and en guaranteed energy and operational cost savings. It's about 1.7 some million. In addition, um, the contract guarantees the performance of systems and it guarantees no change orders. And there's one more uh, response from Audra Kaler. Sorry, just to add to this as well, a lot of the 
elements that have been bundled into this project or work that needs to be done regardless. So things like fixing the opera house roof that's leaking, that's a project that the town is going to have to undertake no matter what. Same thing with some of the um, upgrades to all of the other buildings. So a lot of this work, it just has to be done. We can't neglect our buildings. So this is a way to bundle a lot of those projects in with energy efficiency measures. Is there another question? Please flash your lights if you have a question or would like to speak. If you have a question, please flash your lights. Or if you'd like to speak. Okay, there's one on the right side. We're going to get a mic to you. Hi, Pete Collagen from 14 Central Street. I'm on the town's uh, Energy and Sustainability uh, Commission. Uh, and after spending a lot of time talking to the select board members and getting uh, a better understanding of this, uh, and Excuse me, could you just speak up a little bit? Sure. Thank you so much. And having um, uh, been very Im interested in getting the Camden town to sign on to the Global Covenant of Mayors. Uh, I think this represents an, a, a sort of boots on the ground approach to making the changes that we need to make to our energy infrastructure going forward. It's a pretty good deal um, and there's always room for more uh, input into exactly how we do this and I would encourage folks to um, get in touch with either the Energy and Sustainability Committee members or the Select Board uh, going forward with good ideas on how we can make this even better. So uh, I, I, uh, uh, after much consideration, I'll be voting for this bill. Uh, uh, Pete, thank you, uh, Bob, again. Um, Pete raises a great point. And as we go forward with this, we're still trying to fine tune the scope with various elements and we always encourage public input on all the factors that are in the in the package thanks for saying that Pete okay I'm told that there is a question in the very back and we are going to get a microphone to you thank you so much for your patience Vicki Dudera, 18 Trim Street. Just turn down my radio quick. Uh, in my work as a state representative, I have actually read the Climate Council's report, and I'm listening in on many um, environmental meetings where we're talking about sea level rise and the, uh, just the effects it's going to have on our, especially on our coastal communities. So I really want to applaud our town. I'm very proud right now to think that we're debating this and we're uh, looking at making these changes while we also upgrade our buildings and I'm proud of us for trying this kind of crazy format on a night that's very freezing cold um, but I do have a quick question and that is that I'm wondering should this not pass tonight I certainly hope it does but if it doesn't is it something that can be brought up again later um, perhaps in June for a vote thank you Uh, Mark Ratner again. Uh, yes, we can always go back. Siemens is willing to go back, but it will cost us, as I think Audra mentioned earlier, the cost for the contractors um, and the contracting has already risen based on uh, 
based on what the agreement Siemens already has. So what we've seen is that to go back in June, this would at least cost us estimated another $200,000 to do the work that we've already got guaranteed at this price now. That's one of the reasons we've called the special meeting to save so much money. Thank you so much. Any more questions, comments? Please flash your lights and we will get a microphone to you. I see one in the very front on my left. A microphone is on its way. Thank you. If you could maybe give it one more flash. This is Barbara Nichols at 40 Washington Street. I would like to know if this is voted down tonight, perhaps it might be because there are some things in this whole um, thing that might not be absolutely necessary. And maybe that would be a consideration if it were um, like the snowball, I'm not sure that the, we have struggled with that for years of, of if even being financially worth it. But I just think that there probably are some things in there that might not be uh, absolutely necessary. Very good. Thank you for your comment. Hey, this is Taylor Benzi on the select board. Um, on the snowball question, I think it's uh, no news to anybody that's been a, a topic um, for decades about uh, how we approach the snowball and the future of the snowball. Uh, maintaining the current lodge, will there be a new lodge? That's, that's not a question that we're going to uh, uh, solve tonight or anytime soon. <clears throat> Specifically, how this project, in my mind, relates to the snowball, I asked the question at one of our select board meetings about the geothermal unit uh, that's been discussed earlier tonight. Uh, two key points to that that I think are important to note are uh, that that specific unit, a geothermal type unit, works in this performance contract because it is an energy savings type of unit, which qualifies us for tax rebates that are part of what keeps this performance contract so low. If it were just any other type of uh, HVAC system that creates more of a carbon footprint, we would lose that opportunity. Um, so there is a specific uh, reason for keeping that in mind in part of the contract. The other piece of it um, is that that geothermal unit um, is being built, set up in a way that gives us flexibility in the future um, so that we're not tied down um, to anything specific if there are indeed changes that we want to make um, or additions and improvements that we want to make at a snowball in the future. It gives us flexibility. Thank you. I believe there was a question in the third row. Does that person have a microphone? Hi, this is Skip Bates from 71 Washington Street. Uh, we keep talking about the guaranteed savings, and I'm just wondering what the audit procedures are. Will there be a report of some substance that is shared with the town on an annual basis to evidence those savings? Thank you. Uh, the simple answer to that question is yes. Um, every year, after the first year, of course, when things are installed, there will be an audit of the savings. If the savings come in audited, come in less than uh, the amount that's been guaranteed, we, we will be reimbursed for the difference. If the savings comes in more than the amount that's been guaranteed, we will also receive that benefit. Thank you. Is there a question? Would anyone like to ask a question, make a comment? Please flash your lights. May I, Dave? Go ahead. Hi, I this is Patty Feeney, 10 Rockbrook. Um, two questions. One is, can you, um, and this, this is a follow-up to a question that was asked a few minutes ago. Can you discuss, or just give me a ballpark, of the dollar amount of items that are required to be done 
and then those that we're doing that are additional things, such as um, the geothermal uh, snowball. And then secondly, can you guys address, because um, I think this is one of the concerns of some people, is the timing of this, given that we're, you know, businesses are closing in town and, and so forth. It's not, it's economically, it's not great. So if you could address that as well. Uh, Mark Ratner again. Um, now, of course, the, there's a lot of discussion about the geothermal, geothermal unit here at the Snowball. That's something that we're preparing for the future. I must say that everything else in the last five years in the select board, everything else in this contract is something that is direly needed to repair our buildings. The leaks in the roof at the, at the uh, uh, at the Opera House, the HVAC system at the, at the Public Safety Building, the library especially has a lot of work that needs to be done. They need to be done and they need to be done quickly because it's causing us more problems and will cost us more money in the future. In terms of the cost for in a pandemic, if we wait to do this, it will cost us more. Uh, I was incorrect when I said the new cost, if we were to wait till June, would be 200000 uh, Bob informed me that it would be $300,000 more to do this work. And this is work that we have to do. You can't put off saving our library. You can't put off that kind of work right now. That's why we're, we're standing up here uh, in this cold night so committed to this because it's so important to the town. Hello, this is Taylor Benzie again. Um, just a note on the economics of doing it this year. Um, obviously, the savings are a, a big part of why we're trying to make this happen now. But in terms of impact, because of the way we're taking money from the undesignated fund balance for this year's um, uh, debt service, there won't be uh, uh, an impact on tax bills this year. Uh, that won't happen until uh, fiscal year 23. And just to uh, clarify uh, comments earlier, um, and I apologize for not mentioning this earlier, but to this question, the, ta the simplistic view of the taxes is if we do everything in the package, and we may not, um, the tax impact of the payment per year would be about seven or eight cents on the mill rate, which to bring it down to more common uh, discussion dollars is about 25 or $28 per year for the average valued property in Camden. Thank you. Is there another question? If you have a question, please flash your lights. Could you, f I, I think I saw one in the rear in the center. Is, is there someone who wants a question? Okay. A microphone is headed your way. Thank you for your patience. I'm sorry, we're having a hard time hearing you. Could you try sorry, speaking louder? This is John French, 23 John Street. You, I'm just curious, you keep mentioning the 200000 you're going to take out of surplus to offset this um, first year payment. Are you still planning to use the 150000 that is traditionally used to offset taxes in the budget? Thanks for that question, John. Hi, John. The budget hasn't been prepared yet, but it's highly likely that we will use additional surplus to offset tax burden on residents. Um, just for a little bit of context, $200,000 is about 4% of our unassigned fund balance. Thank you. Is there another question? If there is, please flash your headlights if you have a question. If there are no other questions, oh, there is one. Okay, it looks like uh, in the center, towards the rear. Yeah. 
Flash one more time. Thank you. Could you put your mask on? Are they speaking, do you think? We are not picking you up in the system if you've been speaking. Hello, is this thing on? Yes, go ahead. Andrew Stanshaw, 53 Start Road, Camden. Um, just had a question. If there was already a detailed list of every project that is planned, um, because I noticed in the, in the uh, warrant, it mentioned replacing all the LED lights at the Snowball parking lot, which I only see one and it's already LED. Uh, so uh, is there a detailed list of all the projects for the town already? Thank you. Thanks for that question. Someone is about to respond. Yes. Uh, yes, we have a, a detailed list. I can go through the, the sort of high level, but uh, at the Opera House, there's going to be a lighting retrofit. Based your moisture, moisture membrane is going to be installed. Uh, programmable thermostats, O2 Prime, which is in, a lot in response to COVID, uh, roof replacement for the public library, lighting, building envelopes, so air sealing, attic insulation, upgrading the automation system for the controls, oil tank removal and propane tank removal, um, installing new ones, O2 Prime, um, and the boiler replacement there. At the public safety building, we'll replace the lighting, install new heat pumps, public works building, in, uh, lighting retrofit, also building envelope air seating and a new heat pump. The snowball will be the lighting retrofit to the lodge. Um, and that's just in the, the um, existing lodge, all the lights you see there. Also retrofit of the trail lighting, uh, the air sealing of the building envelope, replacing the front windows and of course the geothermal heating and cooling system and at the wastewater treatment plant retrofitting the lights in the garage. Thank you. Are there any more questions? If there are, please flash your lights. Yep. Yep. Over there on the left. I believe I see one on the left. While you're waiting for the microphone to come, could I just ask, make sure you speak loudly and, and hold the microphone fairly close to your mouth so we can hear you. That will be a help to us. Could you flash your lights one more time, please? Ah, okay, very good. We're on our way. Hi there. Could you give us your name and your address, please? Yeah, it's Patty Feeney again, 10 Rockbrook. Just a really quick follow-up, and I know we keep talking about this, but um, I look at the snowball uh, kind of as a nice-to-have, and I wonder, is the operation itself a loss to the town? And I'm following up on other folks' questions. And then, is there a way to vote with and without that investment? I, I would ask that our questions have to do with this article we're voting on. Is, is, was that a question about this article we're voting on? Yes, it is. And could you say your question again about Article 2? Is it possible to look at, is it possible that we vote with and without the investment in snowball or is it all or nothing my understanding is it's it's all or nothing it's a single 
um, vote. It's an up down vote. Are there any more questions? If there are, please flash your headlights. One more over there on the right, Dave. I'm told there's one on the right. Could you flash your headlights again, please? Someone is on their way. Thank you for your patience. If you could flash them one more time, that would be helpful. Hi, uh, this is Brian Robinson, 20 Azalea Lane again. Dave, um, I would appreciate if Bob Falciani might respond, but it is my understanding from conversations with select the yes, it is an all or no, all or nothing vote tonight. Either yes, we approve it, or no, we don't. But as Bob said earlier, there is nothing in this contract that we can't take out of it if we decide not to do it before it gets built. So if that, if that could be addressed, that would be great. Thank you. Hi, Brian. Yes, we, 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 we are continuing to look at the scope. This is a guaranteed maximum, as it were. Uh, we do have, uh, and we have are having discussions with Siemens of town staff is about whether scope can be, well, changed, and it can be, yes. Um, and that's why I mentioned earlier to Pete Collagen's comment that we certainly welcome input from the people of Camden after tonight regarding their opinions about some of these elements. Um, we, it, it's very difficult, as we all know, especially these days with the pandemic, to get public input. Look what we're doing tonight. But yes, uh, we, we, we want that. We can do that. Thank you. Are there any more questions? I see one in the front row on my left. Okay, a microphone is on your way. If you could just flash your lights one more time, please. Very good, thank you. Hello, this is Robert Nichols at 40 Washington Street. Um, my question is, things like the opera house roof and some of the library work and some of the other work are typically taken care of in reserves and we um, should be allocating money for that each year for when they need to be fixed in the later. Um, are there any reserves set aside for these things already? And if not, why didn't we have reserves? Thank you for that question. Someone will respond. You want to answer that? Are there why aren't the reserves set aside for the library and the opera house roof and stuff like that? So we, we do have a reserve account for the Opera House. However, there is work that we needed to do this year to replace the gutters and uh, fix, uh, do a bit of repointing. And when the contractor who was doing that work uh, began um, making those repairs, they found a lot of additional problems and the cost of that project far exceeded the amount of money that was available in the reserve account. When it comes to the library, that's always been a relationship between the town and the library where the town pays about 50% of their operational budget and they raise funds and do other things to um, raise the other 50% and they're in the middle of a capital campaign to address some of their building issues. Um, but I think that, you know, that's having a reserve account for those issues is never something that the library has, has done because of, um, you know, how they fundraised in the past. And I think that they have found that challenging and that's why they've been included on this project as well. 
I think that's an important point to make, especially with regard to the library. Somebody made a, a comment earlier about businesses in Camden. Well, if there's one entity that's been strained by this virus, it's the library. Um, they're working very hard to maintain service and hours, and at the same time, fully recognize they have issues that need to be fixed. And this is a tremendous opportunity to do it for the library with a very minimal cost to the library given this performance contract. All right, thank you. Are there any more questions? Any more questions? Flash your lights. If not, we can bring this to a vote. All right, I'm going to ask our friends at the fire department to turn the lights back on. That will help us to see your hold-up card. I am going to ask uh, for those who are in favor of Article 2 to open your window and hold up your card. And I know it's very cold out, but if you could please leave it up, that will help our clerk staff who is going to uh, help us count. So um, in just one moment, we'll get some light. Ah, thank you, fire department. All right, for Article 2, those in favor, please hold up your voter card. Thank you for keeping your cards up. We're just counting. Thank you for keeping your cards up. This is very helpful. Thank you for your patience. We are just continuing to count. Ah, uh, yes. This is voting in favor of Article 2. Thank you for your patience. We're almost there. My arm's going to freeze up like this. The Statue of Liberty. Hey, Bill, you finally zipped up all the way. Thank you so much for keeping your card up. It's a big help to us. I know it's cold. We're almost there. He's just double checking the procedure. I know it's a small comfort, but you're making history. This is the first time we've ever done this. Thank you for your help. Hold, keep them up. We're almost done. Yeah, 
Okay, thank you very much, folks. You can take your cards down. And now, if you would, please, all those opposed to Article 2, if you could hold up your cards. This is for all those who are opposed. This is a no vote for Article 2. If you could put your cards up, we're going to do a count. Thank you for your patience. We really appreciate your help with this. All right, folks, thank you so much. You can take your cards down. The result of Article 2, 131 yes, 34 no. Article 2 passes. Thank you very much. <laughs> folks, if I may, I just want to take a second before we go on to Article 3. There's a lot of people working very hard tonight to make this happen, and I won't try and name them because I'll miss somebody, but our town staff, our fire department, our opera house technical director, a lot of people are working to make this happen, so. And the Rotary, and the Rotary. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move on. Article three, I'm gonna read the article. I will ask for it to be moved and seconded then there can be discussion like we just did. 
Here is Article 3. In the event that Article 2 is approved by the voters, shall the town vote to authorize the town manager to execute a financing agreement slash loan with Siemens Industry Inc. in the total amount of $2,336,000 as, um, as amortized over a 17-year period with an annual interest rate not to exceed 2.5% to fund the energy efficiency work and improvements described in the performance contracting agreement. Do I have a motion? So moved, do we have a second? We have a second. So folks, once again, if you have a question or a comment, if you could flash your lights, that would be great. And before we do, I'm sorry, I just want to take a minute. If you should need to leave or decide to leave, please go through the front and then around this side on the snowball side. Now, if you would, I see a flashing light in the center. We're going to get a microphone to you. And everyone else, if you could turn your lights off, please. That'll help us to get a microphone to the voter. Thank you. Hi, it's Susan Doerr, 17 Mill Street. My question is, was the performance contract with Siemens contingent upon their holding the financing, or was there the option of bonding these funds because I know uh, was there you know was there a more favorable rate available on a on the bond market or um, was the contract contingent on Siemens holding the note on this so we reached out to a number of financial institutions and uh, had them bid on the financing and Siemens financing group came in with the lowest interest rate uh, we did actually receive a lower interest rate from Key Bank. However, they would not amortize the loan over a 17-year period. They would only do it over a 15-year period with a balloon payment of almost uh, half a million at the end. Um, if we had gone on to the a, a bond approach, really wouldn't work for a performance contract. That's with a uh, planned and specced bid project. So that's why we didn't go for a bond on this project. Thank you. Questions, please flash your lights if you have a question. Ah, I see one on my left on the far side. We'll, we'll get a microphone to you. Hello, this is John Doe, and uh, we do live in Camden, but I just want to say that identifying Excuse me, sir, could you give me your address, please? As I said, this is John Doe. We live in a country where we vote in a... Sir, a for everyone to speak, we ask that you tell us your name and your address, please. Is that constitutional? That is the uh, main state law. Is that constitutional? I believe it is. Well, you believe, I don't believe. I think that it is appropriate to allow so I'm, us I'm to sorry, talk. but until you follow the rules and say your name and address, uh, I can't let you speak. Well, that's great. You have to be All of those of who are in candidate. favor of particip participating. All right, thank you. Are there any other questions? Please flash your lights if you have a question about Article 3. Okay, seeing as there are no more questions, we're going to call the vote. Once again, if we could ask our friends from the fire department to illuminate the parking lot, I will ask you uh, to hold your card out the window. Thank you very much. All those in favor of Article 3, please hold up your card.
Very good. Thank you. All those opposed, could you please hold up your card? Thank you very much, folks. Article 3 passes. We are now going to move on to Article 4. I am going to read the article. We can move second and then any questions or discussion. Article 4. Shall the town vote to fund the upfront initial costs of the performance contracting agreement by drawing and paying to Siemens Industry Inc. at the appropriate time up to the sum of $200,000 from the unassigned fund balance, also known as the Camden Reserve Fund. Do I have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Very good. If you have a question or a comment, if you could flash your lights, please, and we will get you a microphone. I think I see one in the center. If, nope, I'm someone leaving. Good night. If there are any questions or comments. OK, seeing as there are none, we will call the vote. I'm going to ask for the lights one more time. Well, actually, not one more time, but again, from our friends in the fire department. And once those lights are on, Ah, thank you. So, all those in favor, please hold up your voting cards. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, all those opposed, to Article 4, will you please hold up your voting cards? <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. Article 4 has passed. I would now like to move on to our final article for the night. This is a non-binding article. This is the way we let our select board know our opinion. And I'm going to read this to you now. This is Article 5, advisory article, not binding. Do you support the town of Camden adopting the following goals and objectives as laid out in the Maine Climate Council's report and recommendations as follows? The town of Camden recognizes the diverse challenges facing the region as a result of climate change, as well as the ambitious emissions reductions goals set by the state of Maine and now signed into law. LD1679 established the Maine Climate Council and charged it with developing a plan to significantly reduce Maine's greenhouse gas emissions. This report is now complete and the town of Camden is committed to working with state government and other partners to implement the recommendations laid out. Beyond reducing greenhouse gas emissions, <coughs> the town of Camden also supports the Maine Climate Council's recommendations to focus on several other key goals as outlined in the report. Create economic opportunity as we undertake climate and energy transitions. Prepare our communities people and economy for the impacts of climate change like rising sea levels, increased flooding and changing weather conditions. To advance equity as we undertake this work, to ensure communities and citizens who are often left behind can benefit from climate solutions by having access to opportunities and protection from threats. Do I have a motion? Do I have a second? second? I'm just going to remind you, the question is, do you support the town of Camden adopting what I just read? Are there any questions or discussion? Please flash your lights. I believe I see one in the far back. They're leaving. They're leaving. Not flashing. I'm, I apologize. It's They're so leaving. Oh. They're leaving because Linda's taking pictures. Okay, if you can hang on, we will get you a microphone. Oh. I want to 
this reason. <laughs> you can do this one by uh, flashing lights instead of a boat. Can you flash your lights again, please? <laughs> I don't think there is one. No, there isn't. One of the last rows. Thank you for your patience. While we're waiting to get a microphone to this person, I just want to thank you again for your good work tonight in making this work. This is an unusual circumstance, and you've done a great job. Thank you. Hi, this is Steve Burleson from 5 Woodcrest Avenue. I just have a question. Um, is this in any sense asking us uh, if we are in favor of destroying the dams on the McGunnacook River? Thank you for your question. Someone will answer. No, this is only an advisory question to see if the town supports the goals of the Maine Climate Council in terms of greenhouse gas emissions reductions and other uh, targets in terms of um, planning for sea level rise and other climate change impacts. Are there any other questions? If not, we would like to call a vote then. If you are in favor of adopting the goals that I just read, could you please hold up your card? Folks, if you would just keep your cards up, we're going to do a quick count. Thank you for your patience. Almost there. Yeah, it's a thing they, we do. It's a subtle way to make you patient. Thank you for your patience. Please keep your cards up. Almost there. Thank you so much, everybody. You can take your cards down. Now, will those who are opposed to Article 5 please raise your voting card? And please be careful as you exit. If you are opposed, please raise your card so we can count.
All right, folks, thank you very much. You can take your cards in. Article 5 is passed with 104 yes, two no's. And now for a moment, um, Select Board Member Bob Falciani has asked to say something. Bob. Well, just want to summarize. Thank you all so much for coming in, in, in this, this event. It will go on the records for Camden. But most importantly, to say to the people of Camden, this is a very complicated issue. You tough through some external influence and taught everybody, don't mess with Camden. Also, I wanted to say that uh, commenting on a, a, a modifying a Rudyard Kipling saying that Bob Kennedy often repeated, changing it slightly for our town, some towns see things as they are and say, why? Others, like Camden, see things as they can be and say, why not? Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Do I have a second? All in favor, toot.